Welcome to TEDxU at LCJSMS 2017, Going Beyond. A sheep is walking into a bar. The sheep drinks his fill, then leaves. Two minutes later, the exact same sheep comes back in. Puzzled, the bartender hands the sheep the same drink. What happened? We will get back to that in a little bit. Now, I want you to think back when you were wearing scrunchies, overalls, crop tops, and friends in Full House were still making new shows. Yes, the 90s. During that decade, a movie came out that you may be familiar with, Jurassic Park. Now try to think about the scene in the auditorium where Richard Attenborough is explaining how his character created the dinosaur. And if you didn't know, he didn't necessarily create the dinosaurs, but he cloned them by using blood from that era and duplicating its DNA. Likewise, a movie called Gattaca predicts the future if we continue using genetic engineering. The movie is based on a naturally born man who has to face the discrimination from the genetically modified superhumans around him, including his brother. No one cares if you're black or white, but what your DNA says about you. I don't know about you, but personally, I wouldn't want to live in a, in a society where all of my decisions are based strictly on my blood and not my preferences. And those are both fictional movies. I mean, we have no idea what life would be like if we did continue genetic engineering or cloning in real life? Would people become genetically, genetically modified? Would we start seeing dinosaurs locked up in cages at the Bronx Zoo? And that's when I said enough with the what ifs, and I wanted answers. That's when I knew I wanted to learn more about what the future of cloning would provide for the world. I was lucky enough to talk to a professor from Rutgers named Anwar Nassim, who has a special interest in biotechnology. I very much agree and like his theory on cloning, which is to continue it for the medical and technological advancements it can possibly bring us, but put many, many restrictions on it so it is strictly used for scientific purposes only that will hopefully help improve society. So what is cloning? How does it work? Well, to start, there are three different types of cloning, gene, therapeutic, and reproductive. And when physically creating a clone, all three methods coincide with each other. It's all like one big relay race. The first lap is gene cloning, getting the organism's DNA ready to be cloned. Then gene cloning passes the baton to therapeutic. Therapeutic will transfer the duplicated DNA to the recipient. And lastly, reproductive cloning will determine if the team wins or loses. Or in other words, if the egg will be able to flourish in the host's uterus. And if they win, they'll be able to have the baby. Congratulations! It's really not that complicated if you think about it. Though thinking and doing are two completely different ideas. Today, cloning is way more advanced from when the very first clone was created in 1996 and is on its way to creating the very first human clone. Although some companies claim they created a human clone, they've never shown actual proof. Like a company called Clonade, Created through the religion of Raelian, which thinks humans were created by extraterrestrials, yes, aliens, claims they created the first, second, and third human clones, though they provided zero evidence besides a video of the first clone named Eve, even though they stated they were going to give DNA evidence, then backed out. Hmm, I wonder why. Now, just because there hasn't been a credible human clone, doesn't mean there hasn't been a handful of animals that have been. How many of you have heard of the first living clone, Dolly the Sheep? Dolly was born on July 5th, 1996. I know, so close to having a great barbecue every year for her birthday, as long as she isn't on the menu. Creating Dolly was not an easy task, and scientists took almost 300 tries to ultimately produce. And although Dolly was an incredible phenomenon, she still had many ailments throughout her life, along with arthritis. And after Dolly, many other types of animals were cloned. How many of you own a pet? Now for the people that raise their hands, how many of you love your pets, would do anything for them, sometimes love them more than people? <laughs> Most pet owners do, but some have gone above and beyond for them. For instance, Dr. Philip Dupont spent tens of thousands of dollars cloning his 10-year-old Doberman Catahoula mix, Melvin, not only once, but twice. His friends and family surprisingly encouraged him to do this because they figured at least he is spending his money on something he loves. 
And now, several other pet owners are contemplating the idea of cloning their pets. Now, I don't own a pet, so I can't speak on all pet owners' behalf, but if I did, even if I cloned it, I wouldn't, I wouldn't want, if it, even if it died, I wouldn't want to clone it to keep it with me. Plus, cloning should be used for scientific research that will help improve the entire world, not help one person cope with the loss of their pet. So yes, cloning would be able to provide many advancements. In fact, couples who are infertile could still have a biological child through cloning. Plus, genetic engineering could make clones of the greatest qualities, even better, more advanced, and if we wanted to, the perfect human. Though, remember what happened in Gattaca. Regular people like you and me were discriminated against. Therefore, as you can see, scientists are on the right track to leading the very first physical human clone. But the real question is, should we? For one, we have no idea what could happen if we do clone humans. There are a million different unimaginable consequences that could occur, and we are just supposed to sit back and see what happens? No wonder over 30 countries have banned it because they're afraid of the dangers it could cause to their citizens. Also, I've already told you about the medical advancements cloning could possibly provide, but what about the medical disadvancements? What if the clones come with a new disease, very contagious, unaware to the human race? It could wipe out society as we know it. It would be, it, our immune systems wouldn't be able to defend the body because the disease is unaware, unusual, unknown, with no way of stopping it. Another reason is, the ethical problems of cloning are bigger than most people realize. At this time, I want you to think for a second. Do you believe that there is a God? Do you believe that this God created people, society, the entire world? The majority of people do. So for someone to go above God to create a, their own human could result in a spiritual catastrophe of epic proportions. That is just one ethical problem of many. I mean, ever since we were kids, we were told by our parents that it is great and amazing to be different. That being unique makes us special. My fifth grade teachers even told me that if someone ever called me unique, to thank them because it was a compliment to embrace our differences. When there is someone else out in the world exactly like you, you can't do that, you can't feel the same way. Just because zoning sounds futuristic doesn't mean it should be in the future. We are in the future that people from the 50s and 60s dreamt about. I mean, we have hoverboards, we have robots living in our house, like Alexa, where we can ask them questions or tell them what to do, and they'll do it. We are the future, and we decide if we want cloning in it. We, yes, that means me and you, choose if we want to allow people to create a race of humans that'll push us aside, make us feel useless and unimportant. So let me ask you, do you want that? Still. Cloning isn't perfect and needs improvements. However, with the technology that is now available, we could possibly use it for medical advancements, if we allow it. Like Dr. Nassim said, it could improve our society by way more than we can imagine. Though we don't know if this will ever occur because there are so many negative cons and drawbacks to it. Now to get back to that riddle at the beginning, I'm guessing you know the answer by now. The sheeps were clones. <laughs> Cloning. Something you thought was only real in movies. Though, only a little while ago, people used to think movies were only real in books. Thank you.